I'll continue on talking about the Han Dynasty, focusing on the growth of trade and the technological advancements. I hope you guys enjoy. So, um, trade is going to grow tremendously during the Han Dynasty. Um, and it's going to be because we're going to have a huge boom in the Chinese economy. So the Chinese are going to start being able to um, increase production of food because they increased production of iron tools and artisans started making a lot of things as well. Pottery, jade, bronze. We're going to see silk production increasing as well. Now the secret of silk, sericulture, was actually even protected on pains of death. Um, and it's going to become a huge industry from China, and people are going to want silk. Think about it. Most people's clothing at this time is going to be made of wool. If you ever wore a wool sweater, you know it's hot, it's itchy. Great in the winter if you want to stay warm, but not if you're hot. Here we just see a much later um, silk loom. So, as the Chinese go expand further, we're going to have them come in contact with people that are amazed by the Chinese products. Now, during our Han period, we're going to see the Chinese going west and west and finding these very special horses. They were considered heavenly horses because they were bleeding, uh, they were sweating blood. Um, but that they were alive. Um, now we know today it's because of the parasite and these, but the emperor had to have this land, had to have the horses. So he conquered more. And what's actually going to happen to get those horses, we're going to see the most important trade route in probably human history being created, our Silk Road. Now, the Silk Road was not a road made out of silk. It wasn't even really a road. It was a trade route. So we have about um, 4,000 miles trade route that connected China, India, the Arab world, and even Eastern Rome. Um, and merchants would go along and travel the, through the deserts, through the mountains. Um, and it was a dangerous journey, but it was worth it because of how wealthy people would become. Now, most merchants were only going to travel part of the way. They would pick up things like Chinese silk, go west a little bit, wind to get into a town or city, and make a profit. They would sell the silk and the other goods that they brought. That other merchant would then take that, go west, wind up going and selling that for profit, and so on and so forth. So by the time these products got to say, the Eastern Roman Empire, they were extremely expensive because many people had made their money time and time again over it. It was also expensive because it was dangerous. Going all this way, carrying all those expensive things, you had to worry about things like bandits going and attacking you. So, as China continued to do this, we see more and more rest stations being developed to keep people safe, having um, groups protecting, um, you know, soldiers posted, we wanted seeing caravans being used, so having lots of merchants traveling together to have protection for each other. Here we just see some examples of the Silk Road. We're going to see not only is it on land, but it is also on water eventually as well. Now, we see the Gupta Empire in there. We just talked about them in India. They're going to trade with China and be part of the Silk Road. We are going to... I want you to note that you see how it splits off. Once again, this is not just one roadway. We have people going in just this general direction, following some paths that were um, the same as before, but not necessarily. It's just regular ground, as you can see in this picture of this caravan over here. Now, trading brings more than just stuff. Buddhism is going to come to China. Remember, Prince Ashoka wanted to spread Buddhism and sent missionaries all out. Well, those missionaries eventually come to China. And particularly as the Han Dynasty gets older, we're going to see the government is going to become corrupt. We're going to have a 
officials not doing their jobs very well. We're going to wind up having chaos happening, warlords going, taking areas of the land, having violence against the regular Chinese people, a lot of suffering. And remember, Buddhism promised to end suffering. It gave hope. So we're going to see by 200 CE, Buddhism is going to become the dominant religion of China. And we're going to talk a lot about Chinese Buddhism next year when we're doing our medieval history, because we'll pick up right after the fall of the Han. So, how did the Silk Road affect China's culture? Hopefully, he said, uh, they got a lot of money, they got a lot of goods, and it brought Buddhism to China. So let's look at some of these achievements that we have during the Han Dynasty, which is going to happen uh, because they're going to have more wealth. Uh, we see they're going to do tons of awesome buildings, which unfortunately, they're long gone. But we have models to show what they made. We're going to see lots of um, artists and artisans producing amazing um, things. By the way, I'm not going to ask you a lot of these specifics. You need to have a general idea of these achievements. Uh, we're going to see new poetry, lots of writing happening during, lots of music. Now, here's a huge invention that you should know. During the Han Dynasty, they invite paper. Yep, that's stuff that we use every day, and I wish we could still use it in class, but now we're online. Paper. They invented it. We're going to see farming is going to be improved. The wheelbarrow will be invented. The iron plow. Iron is stronger than bronze. They can cut more land quicker and better. They also create the seismograph, which is really cool. The, a seismograph detects and measures earthquakes. Isn't that crazy? They developed acupuncture. You know, you probably have seen it in the cartoons where they stick the little needles and you need to feel better. I know someone who does it and or not does it, has it done to them, and they love it. It feels good. The compass is invented for all you Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts out there. The sundial, which we know is also created in Mesopotamia. We have the water mill, the ship rudder, all of these things being created, um, which are going to be hugely influential inventions. So, what were some technological advances of the Han Dynasty? And I'll spare you my singing this time, I think. Well... Hopefully you said things like paper, the iron plow, wheelbarrow, acupuncture, compass, sundial, watermill, rudder. Alrighty folks, so that is going to be our lecture on the Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty, as I said, is going to wind up becoming corrupt. Uh, the workers aren't going to do their jobs. Um, the emperor will start hiring people based on, well, they're rich and they're my friend and they bribed me, so I'll give them work. And eventually, we're going to see the Han Dynasty fall to rebellion. But it's going to be several hundred years before China becomes reunified again. And we'll get back to China when it's reunified in the sixth grade. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.